and uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, this webinar is organized by the Covenant of Mayors Europe Office with the support of the Energy Poverty Observatory Hub. This webinar will present the energy poverty pillar of the Covenant of Mayors in Europe and describe the support available for Covenant signatories for planning, implementing, monitoring and reporting energy poverty actions at the local level. And uh, sorry, I'm just going to, to share with you presentation yeah i hope i think you can see my screen meantime i i kindly ask to david or miguel to please admit hero Aelio, when he's entering the room and making him co-host so he can uh, share his screen and um yeah uh, I very much encourage you to ask any questions in the chat box so that uh, we can then forward to our speakers and panelists. So please indicate also your, your country, um, your city, entity, or whom you belong to, so we can understand a bit better your question. Please note that this webinar, as you saw before, uh, is being recorded. So, and the recording will be shared through the Covenant of Mayors channel together with all presentation, which will be shown by our panelists later. Also, please uh, rename yourself you do, with your name and your city, entity, or whom you belong to, so we can have a clear picture of this room. And uh, fine, um, again, uh, I suspect that you are familiar with the various online conference platform by now, but if you experience any kind of issues, please let us know. Uh, right, uh, just to, to give you a quick introduction of how our estimated speakers and panelists that uh, we later discuss quite detailed aspects of energy poverty pillar in the Covenant of Mayors. I am Andrea Carosi. I work for the Covenant of Mayors Office Europe, and uh, I have the pleasure to, to moderate this webinar. Together with me online, uh, there is Miguel Morcillo, Morcillo that will support us in the background from the Covenant of Mayors Office as well. The, fear, the first panelist is uh, Ero Aelio, an advisor on energy transition and local governance at European Commission DG Energy, who will present a useful overview of the energy poverty European policy context. Uh, then we are joined by the colleague Davide Casamagnago from the Covenant of Mayor Office, who will present how the energy poverty uh, pillar is declined uh, in the Covenant of Mayors Europe monitoring and reporting framework. Then we are joined by Marco Pitalis from the JRC, who will present the energy poverty indicators available in the Covenant of Mayors Office. Then Jep Michael Jensen from the Energy Poverty Advisory Hub will then present the support available for local authorities. Uh, then it will be my pleasure to give the floor to a couple of very interesting experiences about tackling, tackling energy poverty on the ground. They are Julia Linares Martin from the city of Barcelona and Glendy Sox from the Brass Metropole. During the last part of the webinar, you will have the possibility to ask questions or share inputs and comments. So again, I invite you all to put your questions or comments in the chat box. Um, sorry, uh, before to move um, on the first speaker, I will invite you to, to ask where to, to uh, two quick questions, let's say. The first one, as you can see here, is just for having a more clear picture of this room. So if you are a covenant signatory, coordinator, supporter, or other, it's a simple question so I think that it will take some seconds yeah we have 40 percent at the moment we can see that there are 20 percent of coordinators but half of the participants are other so we are really happy to see that also the Covenant of Mayors webinars are useful also for people from outside let's say from not our community 55, please reply. I'm oh, really happy to see that there are a lot of participants. Great. 60%. Okay, so I think that it's a useful 
number to to close this pool and just saying that's okay half of you are from other entities but then we have 20 percent of supporter and coordinator as well and 50 quite 50 percent of signatories and uh, yeah the second pool uh is about uh to understand better which is your level with with energy poverty, let's say, on the ground. So to what extent is energy poverty integrated in your local regional energy planning policies, strategies, and measures? So you can choose one single option from not integrated at all, consider it as an issue, but not planning has taken place, integrated in sectoral strategies and planning tools, or you are super advanced and you have already measures to tackle energy poverty implemented. I will give you half minute more. Fifty percent. Meantime, we can see that only fifty percent are saying that. The energy poverty is not integrated at all, so it's really good to see that most of you are already involved in some way in this fascinating topic. Five seconds. Great. So uh, we can see that, okay, there are around 15% of people that uh, say that, that energy poverty is not integrated at all, but at the same time, we have a similar percentage of, let's say, advanced uh, experiences. And then we have, let's say, most of the participants, so 40% 40, 40 are considering energy uh, poverty as an issue, but no planning has taken place. And uh, so, I think we can start now with the presentation and uh, it is uh, my great privilege to, to give the floor to Ero Aelio that will provide us with uh, an opening introduction. Ero, the floor is yours, please. You can share your screen. Andrea, you were mute. It looked like you were saying something just two seconds ago. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just saying that Hero is just joining okay. because he was busy with another quite overlapping meeting. Hero, are you here? Uh, Can you yeah. hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, very well. Okay. Very well. Uh, let me see if um, <clears throat> some issues here. So, uh, does the do you see my presentation by chance? No, still not. Okay, let's see what I need to push here to get it going. Uh, here. No, no. Okay, I can see it myself. Uh, let's see is it this one. Resume slideshow. Anything happening now? No, but no worries, Harry. I'm going to, I'm going to share for you. Can you do it? Yes. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Something's not working. <laughs> I don't know what it is. No problem. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, uh, yeah, anyway, good morning, um, everyone. And uh, uh, I'm actually, uh, you, you can turn to the first slide already, please. Uh, yeah, it's there, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm must say that I'm actually excessively happy uh, to see this uh, third pillar uh, launching now. And uh, I can very well sort of recall back in 2015 when we 
added this pillar to the covenant and we were wondering with colleagues how on earth we're going to make it work in practice actually but uh, thanks to the hard work of of covenant uh, the uh, commission colleagues uh, all these energy poverty experts and of course the energy poverty observatory and now lately the advisory hub and the cities so this thing actually came about so uh, let me look at now a bit at the politics around this 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 uh, uh, initiative and uh, the uh, uh, this first slide takes us actually to the middle ages of the of the work about a decade decade ago when uh, i got the job to chair experts and stakeholders in a vulnerable consumer working group uh, of the commission at that time so uh, uh, the logic was there to check if we can improve the protection of, of our vulnerable and energy poor consumers in the electricity and gas legislation dating back to 2009. And when you look at the slide, uh, so you see uh, Arnold and uh, Barroso, our commissioner, uh, they're um, very happily smiling and uh, reference already at that time in 2013 to Covenant Mayors as a, as a um, key player in this. And for the rest, we were analyzing through several studies, uh, energy poverty to learn a bit better what it is actually and means. Next, please. So, um, next slide, if you can. Yep, great. So, uh, from those days, we uh, uh, then uh, went fast forward to the Energy Union, which was the key strategy uh, uh, back in around 2018. And uh, here, um, like millions of meetings later. So uh, this uh, union was built directive by directive and it had some brand new uh, articles on vulnerable consumers and, and energy poverty in uh, the electricity directive and the governance regulation uh, at that time. So what this did was we gave a kind of a frame for identifying, measuring and protecting um, uh, energy poor in the electricity sector. And on top of that, uh, laid out obligations for member states to define, identify, and if they found significant numbers of energy poor, so to actually address the real problem. So later, this was uh, uh, um, topped up by a recommendation on concrete ways to identify and deal with the root causes of, of the problem. So next, please. Um, then uh, back to close to today, uh, the European Green Deal. And in comes the deal indeed, and the just transition dimension, uh, which is means to leave nobody behind in this uh, um, uh, transformation. And the energy poverty uh, issue was associated to this goal, as well as then connected to the social rights pillar. And, and this was like strong, this aspect was strongly reinforced uh, when this uh, uh, commission took over. And uh, energy poverty became this kind of a deal breaker. Um, and, uh, um, and today we can say that energy poverty is a broad phenomenon that actually affects also not just low income, but also middle class Europeans. So it's not, not anything uh, in the fringes of, uh, of our uh, life. Next, please. OK, well, then uh, we came to the. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, the um, EU published the climate law with a climate neutra neutrality goal, and this triggered a need for action across all sectors of the EU economy to get to a credible path uh, uh, towards these goals uh, already in 2030, and that's the Fit for 55 uh, package of laws that we are negotiating today in the Parliament and the Council. So uh, we revised indeed all these key uh, pieces of law to align them with the target. And uh, you see there a couple of, uh, a couple of those with the uh, blue font and uh, those are the ones that are most relevant for energy poverty. And that means energy uh, efficiency, uh, performance of buildings directives, and of course then uh, resources coming from the uh, emission trading system and the social climate fund. Next. And uh, this way, we've come to the situation where energy poverty has become a, a mainstream factor. 
and uh, we are mainstreaming it through the energy efficiency and uh, uh, directive. And here we're aiming at the impossible, which is actually the EU-wide definition of energy poverty. And at the same time, you know, prioritizing, of course, the energy poor and the vulnerable consumers in, in energy efficiency work. So um, I think when you look at the combined effort of uh, uh, addressing the root causes through energy efficiency and uh, the, this kind of a direct support to, uh, to the needy, so that's what became the, uh, the focus. And uh, indeed, 72 billion uh, euros are, are uh, reserved for that in the um, uh, climate social fund proposal. Let's jump to the next one. Um, there, so uh, we are continuing indeed a uh, Fit for 55 package, and uh, we have more to come here. So the gas and hydrogen uh, legislation that is going to be mirroring the uh, uh, consumer provisions that were uh, built in the electricity directive a few years ago. And uh, then, of course, a huge important brick on the energy poverty wall is the energy performance of buildings directive. And this focuses renovation on the worst performing buildings that often actually house energy poor people. And of course, we are also calling here for better monitoring of the problem through these kinds of national renovation plans. And very important, uh, there needs to be financial support to the energy poor. Uh, in, in this context. Let's go to the next. Um, and then when all this was going on and everybody had hands full of work, so hit, then hits the first crisis, the COVID one. And uh, um, in the short term, of course, it put a lot of pressure on the energy poor by these lockdowns. And then once we started to get over the problem, so then we had the rising gas and electricity electricity prices when the world recovered from the pandemic. And um, what we did, did at the commission is we uh, long, uh, published a, a communication on energy prices and a, a toolbox for member states to soften the blow on uh, the um, uh, vulnerable consumers in the short and medium, medium term. And then at this moment actually this uh, 2019 electricity directive it came to good use uh, and its articles on price regulation to protect the vulnerable and the energy poor and of course the uh, energy efficiency aspects to deal with again the causes and the next uh, um, um, uh, crisis that uh, is uh, there on today's agenda is of course Putin with his invasion of Ukraine so here we responded through a um, uh, um, through the Repower EU joint action, which tries to uh, curb, you know, the um, surging wholesale energy and gas prices, and of course the energy insecurity that was uh, risking to um, uh, to spread well beyond the energy poor of today. And as we were doing this, so uh, of course the clean energy transition. Uh, was confirmed as the solution to uh, to solve the, the 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 key key issue here, which is of course our addiction to uh, fossil fuels. And now then, uh, when we are currently trying to cut the cordon to uh, Russian energy, so we must of course manage this whole process so that houses stay warm and lights on in in Europe next winter. And if we fail in this so uh, we might actually have energy poverty becoming a main street problem in a way that none of us certainly wants next and this takes me then uh, to my favorite slide and uh, the closing of this policy framing that i'm doing so this is on on how uh, the commission complements its top-down policy role with uh, bottom-up initiatives and Covenant is, of course, the trailblazer of, of, the, of the group here. And it was followed up uh, uh, more recently by the European Climate Pact to get to the citizen level cooperation on climate and energy. And then, of course, we are talking energy poverty here. So it's the Energy Poverty Observatory that uh, uh, kicked off uh, uh, work, this kind of a support work 
a couple of years ago, and uh, now uh, the Energy Poverty Advisory Hub has taken over and is expanding on its work. And I must say that thanks to putting the uh, EU will later this month launch a crucial campaign on energy savings, energy security and accelerated energy transition. So that campaign um, later this month, so this will give them great opportunities for synergies to be found between these uh, three bottom-up initiatives so that we can really operationalize the energy poverty pillar of the covenant. And, and that is why this event today actually is really timely. And we can truly say that more than ever, this fight against energy poverty has become, you know, center of uh, attention, not just of the police politicians, but also of press and, uh, and, and people uh, um, in, in a broader, broader sense. So thank you here. And let's uh, kick off with, the, uh, with this event. Great, fantastic. So thank you so much, Hero. And uh, I think that uh, this was a really good, great framing and overview of the current situation, let's say. And uh, if you are involved in the just transition space, let's say, it's a very exciting time uh, with all the direct revisions coming up and so on. And also seeing that technical assistan assistance and various program are being expanded, let's say. Um, so um, I'm happy now to to directly to to run into the the, the second speaker, and I give the floor to to David. David, please, the floor is yours. Thanks, Andrea. I hope everybody hears me. So we get now more into the operationality of the pillar. So what we have developed for signatories and uh, coordinators and supporters to be to be used within your My Covenant user space. You see my screen? Yes, very well. Thank you. Okay, so you see, but I can also move it. Okay. So the integration of the of the energy poverty pillar. My name is David Castamayago, and I've been working together with my colleague Miguel Morcillo from the Covenant of Mayor's side <clears throat> in developing the tool together with colleagues from the EPA, from the Jersey, and many other experts that have been consulted throughout the process. So we, we did went through uh, the development of what you will what you are able to see from now on into my covenant space, which is based on four main elements. On one hand, we'll have, uh, uh, we have a new reduction goal within the my strategy part of your or if you're my covenant. Then we have the self-assessment tool on energy poverty, which is based on a list of indicators that should help uh, cities highlighting actions to tackle energy poverty. So I will quickly guide you through the four elements of this of this tool that you can experience from from today on in your My Covenant. First element: the energy poverty reduction goal. This was built after an extensive discussion on the political commitment of. The so we have taken the narrative uh, of tackling energy poverty and to ensure a just transition, and we have placed it within the objectives of your uh, covenant um, commitment. This is also, and you will see it later, uh, supported by the possibility to choose monitoring indicators for a more quantitative target of your um, of your of your action. As all the other goals under your uh, um, SECAP. It's it's uh, it's found uh, in the reporting corner section of my strategy under the specific tab of my um, navigation tab of my my strategy. In there, uh, below the mitigation and the adaptation goals, you will now see also the energy poverty goal as I describe it. That looks exactly like this. This is a screenshot taken from the from my covenant. So it reads: take all energy poverty by, and then allows you to select a target year to ensure a just transition. The second two columns then ask you to uh, insert the target year and the base year from which you start with the, with the action highlighted to take a energy poverty. So as you can see, it is more a qualitative than quantitative uh, target, but it exactly reflects the uh, commitment that signatories are asked to sign when joining the Covenant of Mayors. The second element is assessment tool on energy poverty, which Nowadays contains, after an extensive work uh, behind the scene, a list of over 20 indicators that can be picked up and used by signatories. Indicators are grouped in five macro areas, climate, facilities and housing, mobility, socioeconomic aspects, 
policy and regulatory framework and participation in the awareness raising. These are five macro areas in which indicators, which we see then being uh, even more than 20, but 20 are the one that the system provides immediately when you access your uh, your seek up your your my common space then through a drop down list you can add more indicators that are the result of extensive work we've done with the with the expert in the latest months each of these indicator also has a, um, a short generic definition by uh, hovering over the, the indicator with the symbol the information symbol you you will find a short description to help you understand and therefore use the indicators you use Again, here is where you will find the assessment tool. Uh, again, if we look at the um, reporting corner on the left side of your microphone space with Nexus, this will be under the section My Inventories. And then there's the, late, the last uh, uh, tab on the right, which is now called Energy Quality Assessment. In there is where you find. David, sorry, it seems that yes. some participants cannot hear you very well. Uh, I don't know from my side, I can, I can hear you, but please just stay close to the microphone and don't move so, too much. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Apologies, I'm on, I'm on mission. The room, so I'm just meeting from an hotel room. Anyways, uh, this is what you see, and I will also try to speak slower, probably, if, it, if this helps. This is what you see when you access the reporting corner. Um, my um the sorry the energy policy assessment tool on my covenant as you can see here's there's a list of indicators divided by macro areas if you scroll down you'll find all the five macro areas that i, that I described earlier indicator by indicator you can um you can navigate the tool the tool asks you to first identify the unit if applicable for the um for the indicator you select then uh, to specify if it applies for households or for uh, persons, then to select a base year, a current level of the indicator. And then, so this is the first uh, uh, always present uh, data set that is required for users. None of these indicators, I, I must say, it's, it's mandatory at the moment. And as I will explain later, there's a buffer period, a uh, flexibility period in the beginning. There will, um, there will then lead to a, a short mandatory component of the, of the tool that I will explain later on. But for now, this is what you see when you enter, and these are the uh, information you can type in. Then, if an indicator is selected to, to become a monitoring indicator by, by, by ticking the box on the second last column on the right, then the target level column will... Um, will apply and this is how you monitor the selection of your, your indicator use of your indicator so not only by 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 placing um, a unit of value on the current level but also a target level reachable by the year that you have put in your uh, in your goal previous slides this is how you navigate the uh, the assessment tool as i mentioned before so besides this list of indicators, which are uh, slightly more than 20, you can below the below the, um, the page add via um, drop down menu. You can add more indicators, and this is the result of the extensive work we've done uh, in in selecting indicators. So whenever one of the indicators is uh, selected from the uh, drop down list, it will appear also in here in the tab. And so you will be able to fill it up column by. The third element, as I, as I previously announced, are the actions. So uh, all the SICAPs, they should lead to define actions to, uh, to, to, to face climate change, mitigation, adaptation, and from now on also energy policy. They're found in the uh, My Action uh, part of the reporting corner, and there is a, a navigation tab called My Action Overview and Action Detail. So it applies in both the aspects that we guide you through now the my action overview addition to energy poverty and the action details uh, first concern the actions overview in the my action overview tab signatories are to indicate only the approximate number of actions including the action plan document which are um, related to energy poverty and um, only at the monitoring stage the action implementation status field will appear i will show you uh, how does it work um, in the next slide? 
For as regard the action details, um, the changes that you find now in line with the energy poverty pillar is that when you create a new action in your SACAP, now you can select and take uh, the adaptation, the, the energy poverty um, component alongside with the mitigation or the adaptation. This is how it looks in the uh, actions overview. So as I said, uh, are to indicate uh, the approximate number of actions, including the action plan document per macro area. So these are the five macro areas uh, described earlier. And the um, monitoring stage will only appear once you are in the implementation, in the monitoring phase of, the, of your SICAP. So the first column is one belonging uh, to the first part, and then the rest, uh, the last four are for the, uh, for the When it gets to the action detail section of your of your SICAP, as I said, you can from now on mark energy poverty and take as a type of action. Once you do that, the uh, three following information uh, will be requested you to, to fill in, which is the macro area that the action addresses, the vulnerable population group targeted, and the outcomes reached, including uh, an indicator, again taken from the from the list of indicators. So these are the Three slash four, if we consider also the extra list of indicator element of the energy poverty pillar that you will find from now on on our my column. As I um, quickly touched upon earlier, there's a there will be a transition period until the end of 2000 and the 2024, with uh, in which no mandatory data uh, are required. After that, <clears throat> there are there will be a there will be a mandatory uh, indicator to be used that will be recognizable uh, because it's highlighted in in yellow. There will be a single indicator that is asked um, municipalities and signatories to fill in and use, but not before the end of 2024. You will find uh, the annex document with all the list of indicators and descriptions available into my covenant as well in the section and most useful are reporting guidelines that describes step by step all that we went quickly through today and this is also available uh, both in your my covenant space there will be a link to find the reporting guidelines and also in the public library of the covenant of mayors website so andre i guess we have a q a session at the end right uh, we should keep the questions there yes right right so i'll be of course available till the end and for this is the, the end of the presentation for now Great. So thank you. Thank you so much, Davide. I think it's really useful uh, overview, let's say, of the um, integration of energy poverty in the Covenant of Mayors. And uh, I will now give the floor to, to Marco Pitalis from JRC talking about the energy poverty indica indicators in the Covenant of Mayors Europe. Marco, please, the floor is yours. Hello. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let me try to share the screen. I hope you can see it and that you can see it in a presentation mode. Uh, still not in a presentation it's mode. Coming. Yeah. Here it is. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, inviting the JRC for this launch event. It's a really important uh, step as a, a provider of scientific support to the Covenant initiative. We are, we are really glad to be here. And during my presentation today, I will just give a brief overview of uh, the energy poverty indicators and uh, what have been the principles behind the identification of these indicators, the process we followed uh, altogether uh, defining the indicators. And uh, we'll have just a snapshot of a couple of them to have a practical example of how they look like. Uh, so principles behind the, the rationale behind the energy poverty indicators. Uh, Basically, uh, we mentioned that the energy poverty theme is uh, really multidimensional. So one uh, foundational principle was to identify a set of indicators that could encapsulate all these different dimensions from uh, climate uh, aspects, socioeconomic aspects, uh, reference to the housing and facilities and uh, the regulatory framework. So we looked at uh, the list of indicators in these terms. And uh, the second principle was to structure them uh, giving a certain relevance and reference to this different dimension. And uh, Marco, also to... Marco, sorry, um, yeah. we still see the the, um, the cover slide is not moving. 
okay. I don't know if you're moving. Yeah. Yeah, I moved, but maybe it's uh, slow. Can you see a slide titled "Energy Poverty Indicators"? Now? Yeah. Or... Only. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. Right. The title slide only. What, what you could you do see is first putting the presentation into presentation mode and then share your screen. By Let the... me try that way. Marco, you may have two different monitors. Uh, no, engaged. just one, but ah, let's okay. see. Well, then the, 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 yeah. the challenge should be easy to overcome. <laughs> Otherwise, okay. I can share for you, Marco. Mm. Do you see it yeah. moving now? Yeah, yeah, super. Good. So this refers to the principles I was mentioning. So a uh, list of indicators that could encapsulate these uh, different dimensions, having a structure with reference to uh, the various micro areas and level of relevance for the indicators, and then uh, framing the indicators so that there is uh, flexibility in reporting, both in terms of what is asked and the uh, possibility to select uh, the indicators. And uh, the process we went through with uh, all the exchanges uh, among uh, the Covenant of Mayor Europe Office, uh, the advisory app, the GRC, uh, basically follow this, uh, uh, this journey. We started with a long list of indicators. We worked towards the categorization and classification. We had an important uh, intermediate moment with exchange with practitioners where there was a first, uh, let's say, testing of uh, this list and uh, give the possibility to incorporate feedback from uh, uh, practitioners. And then we reach the final definition of the list of indicators. And the uh, last point, uh, an important thing is that uh, the pillar is aligned uh, to the larger effort at global level of the Covenant Initiative of uh, uh, launching the energy access and energy poverty pillar. So this is an important step for the Covenant Europe, but fits uh, into a broader, larger picture of launching the energy access and energy poverty pillar at global level. Uh, now, the final list, what's the final result? Long list of indicators, 56 energy poverty indicators. Uh, as mentioned already by David, uh, the important thing here is that they, they are comprehensive, but the level of uh, uh, requirement for reporting, it's really uh, flexible. Uh, and then after, at the end of 2024, there will be only one indicator that will be required. The other are open to the different, to the signatories to select what they are most uh, relevant for them. They are structured in macro areas, these dimensions of the energy poverty theme that we, uh, we referred before. And then there is also a division in different, let's say, priority levels uh, set. They are classified as monitoring indicators. They are useful, they, they serve the assessment part. And then there is also a set of uh, uh, indicators defined as related indicators. These indicators, they provide informal, con important contextual information that complete the picture of the energy poverty uh, in a, a specific context. Now, let's have a look at some uh, examples. If we look at the socioeconomic uh, uh, macro area, some of the indicators uh, uh, are these, uh, but just two, two examples. The first one is a monitor indicator. And it's the one that will become the mandatory indicator in uh, 2025 and refers to percentage of persons or households spending up to a certain percentage of their income on energy services. So the level of flexibility here is already visible in terms of uh, possibility of reporting against persons or households. And then this percentage, this, this threshold that then defines uh, when a person or household falls into a situation of energy poverty will be uh, set by the signatory because there are different uh, uh, situations depending by the different regions. So there will be the possibility to, to tune to, to define this, uh, uh, this, uh, this threshold for the signatory. And then as the related indicator, uh, uh, consider here in this example, the unemployment rate, so it's important contextual information to 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 complete to interpret uh, uh, really the the other uh, the, the whole uh, picture and uh, finally other example regarding the regulatory framework uh, macro area here one uh, indicator i wanted to to refer to is the existence of energy poverty strategy so it's a binary indicator yes or no there is a strategy in place uh, or not yet and it gives a quick uh, uh, idea of what's the uh, uh, situation uh, for a certain signatory and this related indicator 
uh, existing of incentives of landlord programs. So there might be already initiatives uh, uh, looking at this uh, this aspect. It's a uh, contextual information that completes the fact that uh, it can be related to a, a large strategy on energy poverty, or maybe not, because there would be this, uh, for example, uh, this type of action in place, but maybe it's not strategized within a, a larger plan. Uh, with this example, I finished my presentation, I would say two uh, highlights. A uh, long list, a very comprehensive list of indicators that cover all these different dimensions. And then uh, a high level of flexibility in terms of uh, uh, type of reporting and uh, identification and selection of uh, indicators that are more, most relevant for the signatory. This concludes my presentation and uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. So great, thank you. Amazing, thank you very much, Marco. And it's I think it's really useful not to, to to have a look to see these kind of really complex and scientific uh, process that is behind of the um, of the indicators. Let's say so. Just go, just run into the the next speakers. I'm really happy to 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 give the floor to to Yep Michael Jansen from the Energy Poverty Advisory Hub. Yep, please, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Andrea. Um... Let me just uh, try to do the same magic as everybody else in sharing my screen. It's coming. Yeah. So patience is a virtue yes. when it comes yes. to IT applications. Um, I hope you can see me now. And more importantly, I hope you can see my slides. Uh, so as Andrea said, uh, uh, my name is uh, Jeb Mikhail Jensen. I, am, uh, I represent the Energy Policy Advisory Hub. Uh, it's already been mentioned several times, so I will not dig so much into the history of it. Edo really pinned it out. Uh, uh, so, so in case there are any doubts, uh, go back to the streams that will be available on the Covenant of Mayors website later on. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the consequences of our, let's say, our increased ambitions on the uh, on our on our targets for our energy transition, plus what the uh, advisory hub is here to help you with. And you may have guessed that there is a tight connection between the two. So first of all, just to sort of set the frame of why, are, why have Andrea and the Covenant of Mayors uh, office invited uh, the Energy Poverty Advisory Hub here. It is because, and has been mentioned before, that uh, the third pillar, as we call it, uh, of the Covenant of Mayors uh, political commitments is energy poverty. Uh, and there was a question regarding uh, regarding when energy poverty actually entered the commitments. I think also Ero actually pinpointed this, uh, but back in 2015, when the 2030 commitments were included, that was actually the first time where energy poverty was um, was included into uh, into the Covenant of Mayors framework. It has been further refined now with a new uh, 2050 commitments. But uh, this was the first time, and this also means that the question uh, to the uh, to uh, the answer to the question in this slide is yes. Uh, you should for sure consider energy poverty uh, in your uh, work on the CICAP. Um, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about how, where to look for how to do so. So basically, uh, the Energy Poverty Advisory Hub is here to contribute. Uh, in the support on energy poverty. The, as David had presented, uh, the Covenant of Mayors has been leading with the Covenant, uh, Covenant community the process on uh, developing the local indicators. But uh, actions on the ground uh, is uh, primarily empowered by the activities coming from the Energy Poverty Advisory Hub, meaning a lot of practical guidance, uh, good examples, uh, e-learnings, technical assistance, as is said here, to apply to the uh, framework that uh, Davide and uh, the Covenant of Mayor's Office have, uh, have developed recently. And 
obviously with the technical support from uh, from Marco and the Joint Research Center. So uh, sort of uh, the support comes from all different directions. So you uh, so you can feel uh, as uh, at ease as, as possible. Coming back to the to our increasing ambitions of the transition, uh, I recall back in the beginning of the Covenant Mayors uh, times when the target said a, a reduction of 20% by 2020. Technically, this is this could be done by the municipality itself, or let's say the uh, can we call it the, te the Tesla segment, perhaps. So the front runners could basically reach these targets on our own. Now, when our targets are climate neutrality, we need full, the whole society to get on board. And this means that we also need to consider uh, the vulnerable consumers in our, in our society, because those uh, at most vulnerable uh, needs to be uh, needs to have a specific attention when we change when we transition our energy system, because uh, uh, changing business as usual uh, is a risk, in particular if you're vulnerable, and uh, that's why uh, that we from the Energy Poverty Advisory Hub will provide you with a series of support to ensure that you think socially every time you consider uh, you consider. Uh, uh, the uh, actions related to the energy transition. Um, I will not dwell too much on this triangle because Aero already uh, 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 presented this, but uh, this is, let's say, a, uh, is a, is a very, let's say, a, obviously a simplified uh, spectacle to put on and, uh, and look at some of the, uh, some of the causes of uh, local energy policy. You will uh, obviously come across this triangle, whether it's in, made in circles or here, like here, but you will come across this very often, in particular, if you visit our uh, website. Um, so I will not dwell too much on this, but just quickly uh, leave you uh, half a minute to read this slide. I don't think I need to read it out loud, but it's the, basically the mission and the vision of the Energy Poverty uh, Advisory Hub as we started out in the, the beginning of last year. So let's, let's get down to practice. Uh, what is it that the Energy Poverty Advisory Hub provides? Um, as you saw, the Covenant of Mayors provide a framework, a political commitment, the Joint Research Center provide technical sort of uh, uh, sort of the technical sort of the academic research uh, uh, um, uh, background to to this, and the Energy Poverty Advisor Hub is primarily providing practical guidance, practical support that allows you uh, as uh, signatories of the Covenant uh, of Mayors, or as we saw many of the particip participants here organizations that are supporting uh, municipalities here to um, empower you to take action. Because it's the uh, local authorities that are the closest uh, authority to the household in need and therefore uh, best place to, to take the immediate actions. What we provide, uh, just a couple of things here. I will uh, highlight a couple of reports. Uh, um, um sort of uh both the the reports here from from that we've started out with as you can see our our library is is not very big if you look at epa publications but if you go to our website you will see that epa is also a platform where everybody with good examples uh or uh, or any sort of uh, or reports or knowledge can provide their information and you can use uh you can um, you can use the website uh, as the library uh, both to uh, submit your information to, but also to extract information. The reports is one thing, but the EPA Atlas is really where we show uh, in a map version uh, examples across the uh, European Union with a bit more than 200 examples. I think they're they're here now. You can also submit your examples. But if you look at that map, you will find out that even though 
energy poverty actions at local level may be fairly new to you, you are not very far away from another municipality that has been thinking uh, along the same lines. So don't hesitate to, uh, to sort of reach out uh, to these municipalities. And you will see that there are plenty of situations that are not exactly similar to yours because not two municipalities are the same, but uh, maybe those two. The same thing uh, in regard to the publications, some, uh, some of, let's say we can call it flagship publications is our trilogy, as we call it on the handbooks. Uh, they, basically, this will be the practical guidance on, uh, on how, how you start taking actions uh, on, uh, on energy poverty, almost starting from the first cup of coffee in your uh, municipal administration where either a politician say we have to do something or one of your colleagues says, I can see we're having a challenge here. So basically from that very little seat and all the way until uh, we cut the ribbons to, uh, to, the, uh, to the implemented project. So let me just move on uh, again a bit on how we're gonna do this. Uh, um, apart from the publications, uh, the, the learning opportunities, we have uh, online courses, we will have uh, international and local events together with our, we have national antennas across the union. Um, and you see already here, uh, the first uh, introductory course is already available online. Uh, as I said, the events. And here I'd like to draw your attention to our uh, first physical conference, which we're looking very much forward to on the 28th, 29th of June in Saka. The registration is open if you go to our website and we would very much like to see you there in person uh, this time. At the same time, don't hesitate to uh, contact us uh, via the help desk and uh, also uh, the calls on technical assistance that is basically bilateral uh, assistance between EPA and uh, municipalities, including also uh, national or regional experts. Uh, this, uh, our first call actually ended recently and uh, we have recently started the collaboration with municipalities just now, but there will be another call in approximately a, a year from now too. So uh, don't, don't, uh, don't think that the, the, the train has already left the station there. There'll be another one coming soon. As I said, the foundation is built around the Covenant of Mirrors. Uh, as well as, uh, as drawing heavily on the experiences from the Clean Energy for You Islands uh, initiative that has uh, a very strong emphasis on, uh, on including the local communities in, in, the, in, the, in transitioning their islands. Because the local communities are also super important when it comes to alleviating energy poverty. You will notice when you start uh, mapping, if you haven't done it already, the organizations that are dealing with energy poverty, the social, uh, the civil society organizations, very often have very detailed information about the situation in, in, uh, in the households, in your municipalities, and therefore a great source of information that can also contribute when you are to select your, uh, your uh, indicators, for instance, as, uh, as uh, David was referring to. Here is basically uh, um, the methodology that we're putting forward. Um, this, uh, I would also not explain all the different details. You may see a certain sort of similarity to, uh, to the uh, Covenant of Mayors uh, circle. And it is uh, no surprise because this is a very common uh, circular planning move. Uh, um, the thing is here, I will not go into detail as I said, I think you should, uh, you, sh you, can, you can read the slides. Uh, uh, when you receive them. Uh, but uh, I just want to say that, as you can see, uh, the similarities between the Covenant Circle and the Energy Poverty Advisory Circle is, is, uh, is no coincidence. It's because it, the Energy Poverty Advisory of methodology is built and developed, designed, obviously, while looking at what the Covenant of Mayor's signatures are to do. This means we do not expect you to do two different plans, we are rather expecting you to consider of all the steps uh, in the covenant process, think socially, think what is 
the impact of what we are planning here on the vulnerable uh, segment of our municipality. And if you do that uh, with the help of the circle here, you can actually integrate the social aspects onto your SIGCAPs, both when it comes to your 2030 and 2050 targets. And I think that's about it. I hope that by this presentation here, uh, I have demonstrated, Andrea, the very tight marriage there is between the Covenant of Mirrors and, and the Energy Poverty Advisory Office. And with that, there's a couple of links. And don't hesitate to get back to us. We know uh, for a fact that many municipalities, many organizations are starting uh, only now. So, uh, so there is plenty of things to learn. And along the way, uh, we'll provide you with a lot of information. But in the meantime, don't hesitate to, to, to get back to us directly. That's it uh, for now. And uh, I hope that was 15 minutes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, you said the right word. It's a marriage, no, between the, the two initiatives. So that's really great. And I think also useful for the, the world audience to, to see this kind of synergies and collaborations uh, between the, the, the two frameworks and programs initiative, let's say. So uh, without further ado, let's say, and uh, we are already out of our timeline. Now we are going now to, to the ground realities, let's say, and I'm really, really happy to share two really good examples from our signatories. So the first of all will be the um, city of Bar Barcelona with Julia Linor uh, Linores Martin, and then we will have the Brass Metropole with Glendy Sog. So please, Julia, the floor is yours. Thanks. Um, I want to share the screen. Uh, can you see it now? Yes, see in the presentation mode. Okay. Super. Um, well, first, I would like to thank you, Andrea, and also Miguel for reaching us and, and giving us the opportunity to share our experience in, in this webinar. Also, I would like to say that um, Elade Torres, which is the director of the um, strategy and evaluation department couldn't be here. So he asked me to, to do this presentation. Um, so I will present the project that the Barcelona City Council uh, develops to tackle the uh, energy poverty. So, ah, okay, oh, sorry. So I will present, um, so I will explain the project, the scope of application. We will see the service architecture, the process that uh, the project has. Um, we will see that not only we uh, work for energy, I mean, the objective is energy poverty, but we have uh, another two work axes. And then if I have some time, I will show you some data and, and results. Um, so the objective of the project uh, had, ha that happens to meet the three axes uh, have like three different goals. The first one is to detect and reduce energy poverty, guarantee access to basic supplies rights, improve and, and improve energy efficiency of households in Barcelona. So likewise, uh, also it aims to promote the employment of people with special difficulties in accessing the labor market. And here the project is connected to another one that is called Labora. Um, I will explain it later more um, specifically. And finally, uh, community work that uh, promotes through awareness and dissemination program, this uh, fight against energy poverty in, in the city. So the service is, is addressed to the whole uh, population of Barcelona, but of course, especially to those who suffer from energy poverty, but also those ones that um, are suffering from other vulnerabilities, as, as we see before in all the presentations, um, there are other indicators as economic and labor difficulties, uh, people who live in house in poor conditions or those ones who are under a situation of dependency or any social sanitary difficulty that requires to have an uh, electronic device at home. So according to, to the target, we have two different measures, precautionary measures, 
which could be like counseling on price rates in the bill or re-education uh, of habits at home to, to improve that efficiency. And also um, we have corrective uh, measures. So the service is, is owned and led by the Barcelona City Council, but it's deployed and coordinated by different, by different um, entities, NGOs. And as you see here, we divided Barcelona in five um, territories, five districts, even though they are nine, uh, but all the neighborhoods are taken into consideration. Um, the project, so here we have the phase, the, the, the process. We have three phases. Um, the first one is the front office and it's a front office <laughs> like that. Um, so it's how to enter to the service and, and aim to detect energy poverty cases through a questionnaire that also we will see later. Um, then if a case is detected, it is redirected to the counseling, uh, which will determine which kind of need and which kind of intervention the person needs. And then if it's needed, um, there is a possibility to develop, a, to, to do a home intervention. So the front office, as I was saying, is the first step of the process. So at this point, the informants, um, questions through a questionnaire um, to the person who is interested and refer to counseling or, or home intervention. We have two front office in each of the five territories. They, most of them are located in housing offices and if not, they are located in public uh, facilities. Only if there is a, a case of reduced mobility, um, they refer directly to a home intervention. Um, so here we have uh, two different kind of indicators that we find on the questionnaire. So the first ones are to detect energy poverty cases and those indicators could be like if the person is cold at home or there is no payment of household utility bills in the last 12 months, or if there is a notice of cut or an actually cut of um, basic supplies. And then also we have this, these other indicators to detect if uh, people are in need of economic needs and labor difficulties, if the, the conditions of the house are poor. Also, um, if people is in a situation of dependency or families have dependent minors, especially those ones who are uh, monoparental families. Um, so here we see that three work access, the energy poverty, that is the one that we already seen. Here you have some different kind of interventions like providing social bonds or ownership changes, power changings, and also rehabilitation grants. Then we have the employment promotion that is connected to this other program that I was talking about earlier. And then we have the community work, which aims to promote awareness and dissemination. And that it's done through 52 workshops that are held uh, in a community level. So that means one per week during the whole year. Um, so now we will see the employment promotion and community work. So here is the employment promotion. Um, as I was uh, saying, the service is connected to the one that is called Labora. This one has a, a, spe a specific methodology to work with people having difficulties to access the labor market. So what we do is to combine both and use that methodology that they have to first have a training um, that it's called agents training, like um, energy agents training, that it's um, directed to three groups of 20 people, which means 60 people in total during two months and a half. And that two months and a half are divided in three periods. So during the first month, um, it's focusing in theory on energy management and energy saving measures. 
whereas the period two, which is also theory, but it's focusing in that two issues, but at home. So like what we can do at home to improve our efficiency, for instance. And then the internship that these people will do uh, is connected to the service on the way that these people are going to accompany the interventors that go at home to do home interventions. So they will learn what are the things that you can do um, there. Of course, digital skills are taken into consideration in this training uh, transversally. And then here we have the community work. Um, you see the four actors or the four main actors that are um, in this project and what are the um, activities, the functions. So for the entities that work in the territory would be identify that service and disseminate it through schools, medical centers, or the districts of the service. And so for that matter, to planificate, to plan that workshop that I was talking to you about late, uh, earlier. On the front offices, they will centralize all the information to carry out advice in their territory. So the agents inform the users that goes there to ask information about energy um, poverty. And then at the level of the coordination of the service, that will coordinate meetings with the district offices, explain the territory, explain uh, the service. So they also knows what the service is. And so the people that mm, they uh, assist, if they have any problem about this issue, they know that this service exists so they can um, redirect the people to the front office and also it will provide support on the dissemination and communication of the project in more in a city level. Um, so that would be a project. I'm trying to <laughs> cut time so <laughs> the other person also can explain it. Um, here we have some data. Um, so this project started in 2017 and the tendency was upgrading but of course 2020 was a um, difficult year for all of us and the uh, total of people assisted decrease um, although the sorry sorry i couldn't change the language of the tax so i'm just going to translate it the blue ones are women and the red ones are men so you can see that the difference between both of them it's the same so 65 percent approx is for women and then the other 55 uh, could be men. Here we have some data for each activity. So front office counseling and home intervention. Here the important, like the key, uh, the key data is that um, number of interviews, which would be the dark colors for front office and counseling. And then the lighter color is for total assisted persons. So we see that um, people who go there have a first interview and also maybe another one, but they are more or less, so the average of the interviews are 1.3 per person, more or less. Um, you see in 2020, the difference is higher also due to COVID-19. So people couldn't, new people couldn't maybe didn't have the easiest access to the service, but they do follow up on, on the old ones. And then the third one, which is home intervention, again, the dark color should, it's the interventions at home. And the lighter one is um, the uh, people who were assisted in, in, in home intervention. So, so, um, one thing is go at home and another thing is to do something at, at the households. And then another variables of interest, um, the graph above is number of cuts detected. So in 2019, again, a uh, big number, but then on 2020 also due to the 
law regulation that couldn't, that um, didn't allow companies to cut uh, energy supplies due to the loss of work because of um, the COVID-19 uh, decreased a lot. And then the graph below its number of um, electrical system settlement, settlement at households, which in 2017, we did also the highest number and then that number um, decrease. So that would be all. I think I, I didn't get to the 15 minutes. Um, I hope I didn't miss anything and that everything was clear. Great, great, Julia. Everything was clear. Thank you so much. It's really, really inspiring, I think, for our participants to see how how you are approaching to energy poverty, to the diagnosing and to engaging really the vulnerable and most affected people. Thank you so much. And now we have last but not least our Glendy Sox that will share with us the, the really interesting experience from, from Brest in France. Glenn, please, the floor is yours. Yes, we can see it. But you are muted. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for uh, your invitation. Um, my name is Glenn Disso. I'm vice president of Brest Metropole in charge of climate action and sustainable development. So uh, I will try to give you a very quick feedback from the Western metropolis in, in France uh, regarding uh, the fight against um, energy poverty. Uh, well, I, I feel very humble to, to, to speak uh, after Barcelona and it was very interesting and inspiring actually. Um, well, so um, with the Paris Agreement, all the European objectives, I think we cities are really put in the front line for uh, a necessary transition towards a more sustainable, more livable future. And we have a critical issue, energy poverty, which is, uh, as it was uh, mentioned earlier, much worse than it was a few months ago with this uh, terrible war in Ukraine and the rising cost of energy, as we all face, of course. And uh, inequalities are growing and the part of energy in domestic budget uh, is becoming really alarming. So our political vision is quite clear. We as political local leaders have to lead the transition toward low carbon, uh, resilient and more livable cities. And we need to find uh, concrete solutions to help most vulnerable people because uh, climate issues and poverty issues uh, are very linked in our opinion, of course. Um, so we developed local policies within European national and regional objectives and uh, building retrofitting, housing renovation and reducing energy consumption is one of the most important action, maybe even uh, the most efficient one to fight both climate change and poverty issues. So in Brest, we started with a one-stop shop with a triple challenge, uh, densify renovations, promote project performance, and fight energy poverty um, of most uh, vulnerable households. And this was one of the key actions mentioned in our climate action plan, aiming at uh, dividing by four carbon emissions, uh, dividing by two the energy consumption, and reaching a minimum of a uh, a third of renewable energies locally produced. So this is the main objective uh, of uh, Brest uh, area. So our climate action plan highlights um, the need to stimulate a low energy building renovation dynamic of 1,500 housings per year, which requires the development of tools uh, as well as um, an environment of actors and services to foster the engagement of private owners. And the facility we created is called Tinergy. Uh, this is a local user information and support desk, a one-stop shop to facilitate, uh, to secure and increase the number of housing renovation projects on the territory, massification being one of the keys. 
So um, in order to encourage renovation, Energy offers uh, a neutral, independent information and um, advisory service, a network of local professionals engaged in quality charters uh, and also local subsidies in addition to uh, other national schemes. So a, a single in entry point to understand the, the jungle of existing initiatives and subsidies and also a well-defined methodology from uh, energy assessment of the house to uh, advice, analyzing prices and solutions and works implementation. Um, so few numbers here showing that we have uh, work to do, uh, that this desk is, an implementation is successful, even uh, if we actually would need uh, more, much more to cope with the situation of the most vulnerable. We are, well, because they are mostly tenants and not owners, and sometimes not easy to reach. Uh, for the most vulnerable, we, we, we try to set up a whistleblower network and concrete immediate solutions by uh, visiting homes. So, um, well, this may be the central slide uh, for today. Um, due to, to a proximity to the inhabitants, and the fine knowledge of the situation on the ground, um, we, we said that local NGOs are the best to support fragile people. So the Climate Active Neighborhood Project uh, implemented in Brest is very significant for us. We, we were already involved uh, in the subject of energy poverty through the uh, mostly the action carried out by the National Housing uh, Agency in France towards uh, uh, modest owners. We committed in, in partnership with uh, uh, other European territories to initiate, uh, to, to try some innovative practices in the direction of tenants of the private park in urban renewal and socially disadvantaged neighborhoods. So these um, objectives were implement more than 400 housing visits in neighborhoods, exchanges with uh, residents, uh, work on eco gesture, access to social tariffs. So these are uh, real visits, spending time to understand every individual situation um, and give advice and install small free eco equipment. equipment. Then um, analyze and check energy and water contracts and bills uh, to understand really uh, what's going on and organize a local network, so the, the whistleblower network with a lot of uh, uh, social workers and uh, other organization, and also organize events to raise awareness on the specific issue among uh, local stakeholders, uh, meaning uh, workshop exhibitions, forums, um, links with school um, and so on. Um, we are now involved in a new uh, climate active neighborhood project, I mean, this time at finding inspiration at other places in Europe to engage small uh, and medium enterprises businesses through employees in reducing energy consumption. But this is uh, something a little bit different, actually. Um, I refer to uh, a, a local network. So I must tell you a, a quick word on Energence which is at the very core of our policies. Uh, Energence is our local energy agency, uh, and I'm very proud to be <laughs> its president. This is a local NGO bringing together all type of stakeholders really, uh, linked of course with uh, the municipality, with the local authority. Uh, and actually uh, Energence is a, a way to act efficiently on the ground on building retrofitting. But not only is this is also a, a space of debate or exchange between all uh, the building sector, the energy sector, the environmental NGOs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so to to think on efficient local ways to actually do the ecological transition, uh, the agency now has more than thirty five employees, uh, technical advisors, specialists in building retrofits. Uh, energy issues, animators for schools, uh, social workers, etc. So it's very, very useful to have this organization providing 
uh, neutral information and technical support to authorities, to other cities, to businesses, to professional, and of course, to uh, individual. And Energence leads a coalition of local NGOs on the topic of home visits with other social workers and uh, local social services. Uh, it also set up a link between the authority, us, <laughs> with uh, knowledge of energy poverty situations we have underground, uh, thanks to these visits, and the information of the, of the network, uh, which is gathering every month, and the energy providers, which can help or sometimes save some, <laughs> some situations. Because uh, I'm not giving uh, any name today, but uh, some companies uh, does not have the most ethical or transparent or respectful and even legal behavior and contracts, as you might know. Um, as this regard, we, we can use a special relationship with the French energy mediator, uh, who is able to resolve individual situations and uh, listen also to the advocacy of local NGOs sometimes. For example, uh, as you might know, we uh, since the end of last year, uh, we have an end to power cuts for unpaid. And this was a, a really a big step, actually. So, well, Energence also tries to raise um, awareness on climate change and uh, adaptation strategy for territories, uh, the use of eco sustainable materials, uh, such as mobility issues, uh, saving water, as it is right as well. Very, very key uh, organization uh, for us in, in the West. Um, so, well, I, I think we, um, in this particular matter of energy poverty and implementing housing retrofits, uh, we're quite a, um, a front runner for in, in, in France, but we still, of course, uh, we, we know perfectly we are, we are very far from coping entirely these issues. Uh, we face several obstacles to achieve the goals of all climate plan for housing renovation, uh, because we really need to increase the number of and massify renovations. At the same time, we have to work on quality and performance of projects. And at the same time, of course, work on the social angle, meaning supporting the fight against energy poverty. So we would like to go a step further uh, by federating all the stakeholders around the global plan and objectives established by public authorities to, uh, to renovate social housing and buildings for the lowest incomes who are often uh, tenants and not owners. So uh, this means retrofitting legal obligations as much as stable, secured grants and financial engineering. So uh, a huge advocacy to make here. <laughs> and uh, this would also mean structuring of the local building sector. Uh, we have huge work to do also. And simplifying the procedures for individuals, uh, promote a coordinated, thermally efficient and cost-optimized uh, technical intervention. Because uh, as I said before, this can be a jungle sometimes to understand. <laughs> um, so to, we cities, of course, we need Europe <laughs> and we fully share the propositions elaborated, implemented uh, uh, with Climate Alliance and Energy Cities. We, we, we talked about it uh, in Nantes during the summit climate change in last March uh, in the wake of uh, Fit for 55 package. Um, we think in, in order to alleviate energy poverty, we think a, a framework to strengthen the mandate of cities is really, really important because we are the closest uh, to inhabitants, of course, and to, to vulnerable citizens. So we can really uh, unleash tailored intervention. Um, also to, to ensure um, increased high quality retrofits, uh, the access to information and implementation services is a key. Free energy consultation and one-stop shop approaches, uh, along with insensitive uh, money subsidies, of course. So uh, this means that we need financial and legal instruments, of course, uh, including special loans from the banks, which is not easy to get. 
sometimes and support legislative, financial, uh, and every measure that enable uh, or strongly incite building owners to renovate and prevent the cost from being passed to, to tenants. Uh, and of course, reduce the energy demand of, of buildings over their life cycle. Uh, this require eco-sustainable materials, for, for example. Uh, Okay, so uh, uh, thank you very much for your uh, uh, for your attention. I hope I was not uh, too long or too wide in this presentation. I, I, I really uh, think that climate issues in our, our local plants must be strongly linked with tackling social inequalities and energy poverty situations, which are everywhere, really, in, in our territory and growing with the, with the, with this crisis. So still a lot of work to do uh, with other territories uh, alongside with European programs, of course. And it's always very inspiring really to, to share some, uh, some experience. And to conclude, just a word on uh, another program on uh, rural urban cooperation on energy issues and also energy poverty, because we aim at reducing the rate of fuel dependent boiler, for, for example. Uh, Brest will be honored to welcome Reg Energy final conference on uh, May the 18th, uh, which is organized jointly with uh, Climate Alliance. So I think, uh, I hope Climate Alliance and the European Commission DG Energy were, of course, invited. It will be, I think, a really interesting report. Uh, Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. Next. Thank you so much, Glenn. It was a really, really interesting. We are super out of time, but I think it was really useful to, to hear everything by you. So we have only two minutes, let's say, for the Q&A session, uh, but uh, we are lucky because we have only two, but really important question. I think one is for, for Davide and the other one is from Hero. Maybe we could start from that one for Davide. So the province of Flemish Brabant from Belgium is asking is if the energy poverty is mandatory pillar for the 2030 commitment or only for 2050 commitment and if it should be integrated in the, in the SEC up right now or not. Davide? Yes, so the answer the answer is yes. So from now on, the energy poverty pillar it's a, it's a, it's a fair component of, of your SACAPs. <clears throat> so from um, after 2020 commitment onwards. Uh, but this again, this is in line with the always um, voluntary component of the covenant of mayors. So the ratio behind having no mandatory indicators uh, in a buffer period from now until 2024. 20, and after that, as Marco said, Marco from Jersey said, Marco Vitalis, there will be only one indicator, the one showed by him, which will become mandatory after 2024. So we always, uh, and we consulted a lot with the group of practitioners, with the covenant community. So the tool are always there for uh, cities not to be uh, a burden, but to be rather an instrument and a, and a support. That's why it's an assessment tool. The goal, as you said, uh, can only can, seem, can, can simply be aligned with your uh, other mitigation and adaptation goals by adding a, a year by which uh, you uh, you aim at tackling energy poverty and your level of uh, of action is then defined with the indicators you use and with the action you you highlight so it's very flexible as the rest of your um, of your circuit has always been great thank you so much david and the other question from her okay it's a really wide question let's say but i think that you already replied something in the chat but christina Pach is asking uh, how the direct support to the most vulnerable people will be activated uh, yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, Christina, for a very key question, actually. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I wrote already in the chat uh, sort of part of the story. Uh, I uh, assume that you are talking about the climate social fund that I mentioned as a source of this kind of um, support. So uh, that fund, indeed, uh, um, is a proposal of the Commission to our uh, uh, co-legislators so the parliament and the council. So they are now actually debating this uh, proposal. So uh, it's not yet uh, adopted. Uh, so um, we have to now see, uh, I think this is happening now during the French uh, EU presidency currently. 
So I, uh, I hope that we will soon be uh, uh, getting to an agreement on that. And once that is there, then we need to uh, operationalize this connection, uh, indeed between the, um, the, the uh, uh, emission trading system and, uh, and the fund. So the, the, the idea is indeed that, uh, uh, for instance, uh, 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 well, the part of the uh, emission trading system. So uh, we are also proposing to, uh, uh, to upgrade in, in three different ways. And one, one of them is just to increase the, uh, um, uh, the current system so that it would, um, of course, uh, uh, produce more uh, revenues uh, to, to be used. And then uh, uh, there's a proposal to extend it to, uh, to cover transport and uh, building fuels, uh, which is another source of uh, uh, funding. But of course, when you go into that, so we have to be careful indeed that we don't uh, exacerbate uh, energy poverty. So that's why the idea is that those funds will be indeed uh, uh, you know, there's going to be a priority all allocation to those uh, who need it, such as indeed the energy poor themselves. And uh, so that's, that's a bit like the logic. And uh, indeed, once we get green light for this, so then we will set up all the, uh, the functions, you know, the functioning, how that is channeled to, uh, to, the, to the member states for use uh, in uh, um, to alleviate uh, energy poverty, so that that's like roughly how that part is going to work. Um, then there's of course more to that. It's not just the uh, the fund. I so if you, I, I suppose you are maybe asking also about like which other uh, other ways there are and uh, and and uh, here I could mention the the one that is already available basically today. So uh, when the, um, the prices started to rise back in uh, last autumn, so uh, we um, published this kind of a communication with uh, various types of, like with uh, tools that we encourage the member states to use in this situation. And uh, uh, many of them have, have uh, used those, including France, for instance, uh, uh, very much so. Uh, they've used everything, including the possibility to regulate prices for uh, for the vulnerable um, and 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 in the poor, and uh, <clears throat> and then uh, to uh, uh, to give out indeed these uh, energy uh, checks that uh, that are well known in in uh, in, in France, for instance, and uh, but there's possibility indeed for direct income support, and not just possibility. We actually encourage strongly this, so that. Uh, the uh, um, uh, this would be used and using using uh, uh, various types of sources, but the uh, recovery and resilience plans, which is this COVID recovery uh, money, and that is something that needs to be used quickly. So uh, um, I think if I recall correctly, next year is the last year when you can commit that, and then you have to spend the money by 2026, if my memory serves me uh, right. So this is something where we really would want uh, uh, the member states to take and uh, reserve funds for uh, for this uh, important purpose. So those are maybe the, like the two biggest uh, biggest issues. And of course, uh, we are here talking about cities. So uh, um, uh, here you will have, of course, the uh, responsibility of the central government to 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 pass and give access to those funds to cities because we know. Like we've seen in all the presentations so far as well, so it's it's the cities who know who the people in need are. It's your social uh, social workers and other people, and uh, that money needs to, uh, or it's best spent by uh, um, by involving uh, these uh, uh, persons who are who can get it to the right uh, um, right address. So yeah, that's what I would say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Really, really detailed explanation. Thank you so much. And before um, giving the, fl uh, the floor to the, the word to, to Jeppe, I think he want to compliment something. I, I want to just ask to, to Julia if she can share here in the chat maybe a reference link to your project in, Bar in Barcelona because uh, someone is asking here in the chat. And uh, Jeppe, please. Just to compliment uh... 
Eros uh, description of the support that's in the pipeline and sort of also Eros sort of having the, let's say the, the uh, more the helicopter perspective from the commission side at the same time. And it's also really, really uh, ties up sort of how the energy poverty advisory hubs activities are tightly connected to what Eros just explained. Uh, Christina Pachi, uh, uh, who raised the question here, you, I know that you have actually been shortlisted for bilateral support from uh, the city of Milan for EPA. And obviously what Ero just explained here as sort of the overall grid is some of the things that we're gonna discuss with you too. How do we plant the seed that connects to uh, the larger structure that's, uh, that's right now uh, in the, let's say the, the, the final development stage uh, of, uh, of Ero. At the same time, uh, I'd like to uh, just give you guys a little commercial break because uh, it's registration time for uh, for the conference in Zagreb, I added the uh, the link in the chat, and this will simply be a direct continuation of what we've been talking about. We'll hear more examples uh, like Glenn's and like Julia's, and uh, discussions on uh, challenges and opportunities of uh, how to overcome uh, energy poverty at local level. So uh, that's it from my side. Uh, uh, but uh, there's much more coming from EPA in the coming years. Great, great. Thank you so much. Yep. I just forwarded your messages here, your message here in the chat. So I think we are eight minutes late, really sorry for this. And I think this is also because I am Italian, so I think something is related. I think it's now a moment to, to where I have to, to, to bring the webinar, the webinar to close. First of all, I want to apologize because I started to see that here in the chat, I was thanking myself for the webinar. So I apologize for the technical pro problem, but probably yesterday I forwarded, the, I was wrongly in forwarding to you a personal registration email. So if you saw like 20 or 30 Andrea Caros in the participant list, what well, was not me or my twins. And uh, I really thank you all so for uh, this useful, I think, inspiring session. We believe it will be 